Hello, hello dear friends and welcome back to the channel for another Guild Wars 2 video. And this time I want to cover one of the coolest game features which was introduced for first time in Guild Wars 2 with the expansion Path of Fire and that is the mount. From my experience as a gamer I know if an MMO has mounts a lot of people will pay close attention to that feature and no matter what the reason is whether you want to get movement speed and cover more ground or you just want to show off in front of the new players in the nearest town if you play guild wars 2 in one point or another you want to get a mount or even better why not all of them obtaining them on other hands may be a bit tricky but worry not i got you covered there currently there are eight mounts in guild wars 2 and in this guide i will show you how to unlock each one of them as well, I will explain briefly what kind of skills they possess. And just to make one thing clear from the beginning, as I mentioned earlier, to get access to them you will need the Path of Fire expansion. Ok, before we start, just a quick reminder. If you find the information in this video useful, please give it a like and share it with your friends. And if you want to support the channel even further, you can always smash that subscribe button. For you that may be a small click, but for me it means a lot. With all that out of the way, let's get right into it. So dear friends, the first mount you encounter in Guild Wars 2 is the Raptor. Its movement ability is called Leap and it allows you to perform long distance jumps, which are very useful to cross over rivers, canyons and other similar obstacles. The Raptor can also engage enemies with tail attack that pulls them towards you. Of course, you can do that if you have the proper mastery. This is one of the easiest mounts to unlock, you will get it by completing the first chapter of Path of Fire storyline, Sparking the Flames, footage from which you see right now on the screen. This mission is only available for uh, level 80 characters, but you can unlock the Raptor on a character that's below level 80. You can do that by learning some complicated Mystic Forge recipes, spending some gold and of course visiting the next concert of Shakira. No, 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 guys, stop, I'm just messing with you. If you are below level 80 and you still want to get a Raptor mount, all you have to do is to join the story instance of a level 80 player, which is currently doing this mission. And I can tell you nothing new about Shakira, but if you want to learn a bit more about the Mystic Forge, for example, how you can change the stats of Ascended Gear or how you can upgrade uh, materials to higher tier, I have a guide for that, so check the description below. So dear friends, the next mount in our list is the Springer. This is a cute rabbit-like mount which can hop high and reach some remote locations. They can engage into fight with cannonball attack by jumping in the air and then start spinning rapidly before it lands on your enemies. With the right mastery it will also knock them down. To get the Springer first you must enter the Desert Highlands map and then go to High Jump Ranch Waypoint. If you didn't unlock this waypoint, keep in mind that you have to jump over a canyon to get there, so a raptor will be necessary. When you are there, you have to complete the renowned heart. It requires performing a few simple tasks, like picking up and returning carrots, filling water troughs, killing harpies and destroying their eggs. After you are done, you get the possibility of buying Springer from the hard vendor for 1 gold and 50 trade contracts. Ok, let's move on the next mount and that's the skimmer. While it's not exactly flying mount, this mantle like creature can hover over the ground and it gets speed boost when traveling over water and quicksands. Moreover, the skimmer grants you full immunity to falling damage and many other environmental threats. It can engage onto enemies with barrel roll that damage them and also heal other players when passing through them and with the right mastery can dive under the water. To unlock the skimmer you have to go to Elon Riverlands and visit the skimmer ranch on the west side of this map. Then once more you have to complete the renowned hard air by doing small tasks like returning rations, herding lost skimmers, playing with baby skimmers healing injured NPCs with barrel roll and killing forge. After you finish, you'll be able to buy this mount from skimmer trainer Ardra for 4 golds and 50 trade contracts.
To be honest with you, the Jackal for me is the best looking mount in Guild Wars 2. These magical creatures, which are formed of shifting sands and given shape by magical runes, can engage into fight with AoE pounce attack, which also grants a strong barrier to allies when it's used. Moreover, they have a short distance teleport ability called Blink. With the right mastery, the Jackals can avoid all kind of damage, including enemy attacks and falling. You can also unlock the ability to use Sand Portals. These are special teleport devices scattered all over the Crystal Desert. To get the Jackal Mount, first you have to visit the Jin Enclave in southwestern corner of Desolation. A skimmer or a raptor will be needed to enter in this area because of the sulfurous around it. And right now probably you are hoping that the next step is not including completion of another renowned heart. Guess what? Hold on to your butts because I have big surprise for you. Yes, you have to complete another hard quest. No, God, please, no! Something really important here, before you even start with this quest, make sure that you already have 20 gold and 200 trade contracts to purchase the Jackal, because if you don't buy it right away, the next time when you complete the same heart, the price will be 30 gold instead of 20. The next mount in our list uh, is super cool because it can fly. And I'm pretty sure that you'll be super excited once you're able to unlock it. And here we talk about the Griffin. While flying a Griffin, you can use two skills. Dive, make you gain speed and get closer to the ground. Climb, allow you to regain altitude and fly higher. The ability to fly is super beneficial for world completion and some other activities. The Griffin can start battle by diving onto enemies with swoop ability. This mount also has multiple useful masteries that let you fly faster and mount in mid-air while you're gliding. Unlocking the Griffin is significantly more challenging in comparison to the previous mounts. And for me also will be very hard to explain everything because this part includes pronunciation of very strange names of locations and characters. But anyway, I will do my best and give it a try. First of all, you have to complete the Path of Fire storyline fully. After you do that, you start finding items like strange feeders, petal of bones and fur and etc. Then you have to take them to Beastmaster Xao in the north of the domain of Vabi. He will send you to see Karkandake in Yahnur Plateau in southeastern part of this map. Reaching this area is quite tricky. It will require a skimmer since this mount lets you avoid the lighting damage caused by Fury of the Brand. You also need the help of other mounts. You can use a Jackal to teleport through the sound portals or a Springer to jump your way onto the plateau. After talking to Kandake, continue upward until you reach the Sun Spear Sanctuary. Then interact with the remains of Last Pier Marshal to unlock the Open Skies collections. There is a separate collection for each of the Crystal Desert maps. You have to take a part in dynamic events and find special runestones as well Griffin X. You also have to buy certain items from the hard vendors in each map. There are 10 items in total and each one costs 25 gold coins. So beside all the effort, you have to pay 250 gold. When you finish all the collections and buy all 10 required items, you'll be able to claim your griffin. It's not an easy task, but once it's done, it's totally worth it. Roller Beetle is the fastest mount in Guild Wars 2. I even heard some people to say, why should I use Waypoint when I have Roller Beetle? And I totally agree with them. This mount has special ability called Bulls that consume endurance and accelerate significantly. They can also drift to turn at high speed, but this mechanic is a bit difficult to use. They can also engage fight by rolling over enemies. With the right mastery it can bounce over water and break through certain type of walls. To get this mount, first you have to complete the 4 armed is forward mission in Living World Season 4. Then you have to talk to Gorik on the northern edge of uh, Allied Encampment. By the way, that Commander, is in Domain of Corner. Of to I unlock the next stage. The next stage is completion of three collections. The first one is Beetlejuice. 
This collection contains 10 items. 9 of these items are found in various locations across the domain of Korna. The last one is acquired by speaking to Gorik after you collect the other 9. The second collection is called Beetle Saddle. Here you have to locate 9 items, however only 7 must be actually found. The last two items are ordered after collecting the other 7. These items are found in both domain of Kurna and several regions in central Tyria. And the last collection is called Beetle Fed, which contains 8 items. These items are found across Kurna, Tyria and the Crystal Desert. After completing the Beetle Fed collection, you receive your Roller Beetle. Currently, the Warclaw is the only PvP focused mount. You can also use it in PvE, but World vs World mode is where this mount really shines. The Warclaws are magical constructs bound to armor of uncertain origin. They can pounce onto enemies with battle mouse skill. They can also dash to move forward quickly and dodge enemy attacks. Upgrade to this mount will grant movement speed boost to nearby unmounted players. Further upgrades will grant it skills such as ability to detect nearby enemies, ability to damage gates and ability to dismount enemy players. Unlocking the workload is relatively easy and cheap. First, you have to spend one world ability point on the workload emblem. Then you have to complete few easy achievements by capturing different types of objectives as well as spending world versus world skirmish claim tickets and badges of honor. You also have to loot an item from guards and complete the world versus world workload reward track. After all that, you can simply buy this mount from Elvid the Warclaw Tender for 8 gold coins. The Skyscale is the second flying mount in Guild Wars 2, also the last one in this list. These dragon-like creatures can enter combat by breathing fire onto your enemies. The Skyscale flies significantly slower than the Griffin but provides more control over the direction, moreover he can land on vertical walls and recover in that position. Compared to the other mounts in the game, unlocking sky scale is much more difficult and time consuming, but I will try to keep the things short. First of all, you have to complete the final chapter of Living World Season 4, War Eternal. After that you have to find Gorik in Dragonfall. Talk to him to start a series of 5 achievements, in which you have to find what is wrong with the sky scales, then you have to hatch one from an egg, after that you have to take care of it, feed it, teach it, and at the end you have to learn how to fly your sky scale. All this will require some karma, gold, rare materials, and some time gated crafts. Even if you buy all the needed items from the trading post, you will still need at least 3 days and 8 hours to complete the whole process. And at this point I really recommend you to use the help of the Guild Wars 2 wiki to complete all the achievements. Because if I show you how to do it for every single one of them, it will make this video 3 times longer as it is right now. I will provide you with the link in the description, but if you want to access the wiki from the game, all you have to do is to write in the chat box slash wiki skyscale and that will open the page for you. With the skyscale our list of 8 mounts is complete. As I'm making this video only 3 months prior of the release date of the new Guild Wars expansion End of Dragons, we already have information about the 9th mount in the game and that is a giant dual gun wielding turtle which can bear 2 players, driver and a gunner. And with that piece of information I want to wrap up this video and at the end just to remind you if you found the information in this video useful please give it a thumbs up, feel free to check the channel for more Guild Wars 2 guides and if you don't want to miss any new content or just you want to help me grow the channel you can always smash that subscribe button. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one. Bye!